Hey guys, it's Susie and it feels like fall in Georgia, even though it's raining outside. That's okay. I'm in Wendy's again, so you may hear some background noise. Right now I'm listening to Lisa Loeb stay. So if you're a fan, I know every word. 90s children, give me a comment below. Anyway, in tonight's video, we're going to talk about using groups in Canvas. And if you want a way that you can assign just certain kids works like work group of kids or you want a way that kids can collaborate with each other groups are for you if you want a way that groups can be flexible they even allow self sign up so stay tuned for all the things I know about groups and then you teach me some more in the comments here we go okay so if you want to set up groups in canvas you first go to the people tab because the people are the people you're gonna put in the groups and then let me move my mic closer forgot that that was way over there anyway and then after you get there, you're going to tap on the top right. You have to create a group set first. And I want you to think of the group set as being the category for the groups. So my students maybe were working on, um, you know, board games or something. Maybe they're going to make digital board games. It's the end of the year. We're doing a review. Sure, I'm going to go with that. <laughs> and Or, you know, a myriad of other things. So, you know, it was Romeo and Juliet. They were making, uh, doing a, I don't know what, it, a Huck fan. Excuse me, I can talk. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, they did a four minute rendition of Huck Finn. So maybe that would be the name of the group type. And then I'm a fan of letting kids pick their own groups because if you pick a deadbeat, that's on you. It's not my choice. <laughs> if you're like, Miss Lonely, you put me in a terrible group. I didn't put you in anything. That is totally up to you. You are the boss of you. Remember Bobby Brown, it's your prerogative. You can do what you wanna do. But I'm gonna say allow self sign up. And I would like for them to be in the same class period. That's totally up to you. And then I'm going to say how many groups I want to have created. So I'm thinking about, okay, I have 25 kids in my class for a nice even number. Let's do five groups of five. And y'all, I'm having to work without a mouse because my mic is plugged in to that slot. Okay. And then I'm going to limit groups to five members because even if I create five groups, then if 20 kids join the same group, you know, that could, cause, that could cause trouble. So I'm going to say I'm going to limit my groups to five members. There are five groups. Yay, yay. And then I'm also going to assign a student group leader. That's just going to be the person that is uh, responsible for handing in the work. And it's totally up to you if you want to do the first student or a random student, whatever. Okay. Maybe if they're the first student to join, they're the ones who are going to take the most initiative. We'll hope so, right? So I created my group set. And then I'm going to hit save. And now you'll notice it created groups under that set. So this is digital board game one, two, three, four, five. And then what your kids will see when they come in is they will see over to the right a join button or a leave button if they've already joined it. Now, if the group is full, it will not have a join button on it. I will try to find screenshots of that for you again. I'm so sorry. I'm having to teach from a free account, having to protect privacy. I have accounts that have real people in them. And so a lot of times I'm like, imagine with me. <laughs> and so thank you for being patient on that. But anyway... I will try to find a screenshot for you that I'll put in the show notes down below, or I'm, I'm talking podcast language, that I will put in the description box down below. So over here, they'll say join, and kids will just be able to go into people, click digital board games, and then join the group they want to join. I want to give you a couple considerations for when working with groups. First of all, you make sure that your people button is turned on for students or they won't be able to see it. So remember, if you go to settings, navigation that third tab then you can drag people up to the top and save it to make sure that it shows for kids obviously if you want them to be in a group and they can't sign up for the group well then and the other thing you want to know is that i'm logged in as a student right now and i have the ability to create groups too and enroll students in them if that is something your admin has turned off yay if not you just need to be aware of that feature that if you turn on people then it also has this capability for students to create groups again i'm in as a student and i can push that and create my own um information for joining the group so just be aware of that and i'm sure your administrator has already you know done something about that but just be aware that it is a feature so i'm going to leave student view now and i'm going to talk to you about some other things with groups so the whole point of groups is collaboration and again if there were students in here i could drag them over and manually make them join too but i had my students auto sign up but here's something that you can do as a teacher because these groups are created under the sanctity of your course, you can see what's going on in them, which is nice. So where it says digital board game one, and maybe there's you know five students in there, I can tap as a teacher on the three dots and I can say visit group homepage. And what it has done on the back side, what Canvas has done is they've created a whole collaborative zone for these kids to work together. There can be announcements that I or the students see in this group course there can be pages um, obviously the list of people would populate in there 
They can have discussions in there. They can create files, store files that are for their group. So I think this is powerful because you can see that. They can do conferences with the big blue button. And then also, this is a really powerful one, and it's got Google built in. If you were, I'm using the free account now. If you were using a paid account that allowed Office 365 as an LTI, which just means that Office is connected to Canvas and has permission to work with it, then instead of kids having to email each other a shared link, they could actually start a new collaboration in here, which is a the same thing that a shared Google Doc or a shared Office file would do, which all of us have rights to write on it simultaneously. But because it's created under the umbrella of your course, you can actually create them for every group and send out a template, but then you also have rights to them. They don't have to share with you later. They're built right into the course. There's no turn in. Collaborations are automatic sharing, automatic, just what they sound like, collaboration. So that's a really cool feature too that I won't dive in too much because again, no students in this course, but you can see that you can do those. Um, you'll also find those elsewhere in your main course, but they're perfect for when you're using groups. So certainly groups are powerful for students to collaborate together in all the ways that they do. But the other powerful thing is that when they work together, they can submit one document and everybody gets the grade if you choose to do that. So um, instead of having to record grades five times when these kids all turned in the same exact file or having to look through five of the same thing, um, then they can actually turn it in once and then you can grade it once and give everybody the grade. Woohoo! So I'm in a regular assignment. You can create that again through a module or through the assignments button. You're the boss. I recommend modules. I've just called it something silly group assignment and then written some directions there. You always want to put directions on an assignment even if you feel like there's an attachment there because again it says no content if you leave that box blank and that we don't want that to show up for parents. So I do everything I normally do for an assignment. How many points, what categories it in, how do I want to display it, blah, blah, blah. What are they turning in? In this case, it's going to probably be online, some kind of something, a file upload or whatever. But here's the part where it gets different, where it says group assignment. You will check the box. This is a group assignment. Again, you have to have groups set up first because then when it asks you for a group set, you have to be able to choose it, okay? Now the other option you have is right here where it says assign grades to each student individually. If this is going to be a group assignment where for some reason kids don't all get the same grades, which I've done a couple times depending on, you know, they rate each other on work or whatever. Um, that's probably not good pedagogy, but anyway. <laughs> you can say I'm going to assign separate grades to keep that uh, whatever grade you put in the grade book from populating to everybody, okay? So again, group assignment, assign grades, uh, you'll probably just leave that unchecked, and then what's your group set? And then when you go to save it, everything else is the same. So I hope that this look at groups has helped you. I would love for you to use it and always come back and give me feedback. Say, Susie, loved it, hated it. This is what I did with it. I wanna hear all your great ideas and you can also find me on Twitter. Take care, y'all. Hey guys, I put my heart into these videos, so I hope you loved it. I hope you've loved all of them, but if you haven't, then make sure you go back and watch the previous videos. I'm making playlists for you all the time. So if you're somebody who wants time savers, there's a playlist for that. If you wanna gamify, playlist for that. And all of my themes of my blog. So did you like it? Go ahead and click the thumb below. If you really liked it, I'd love if you shared it on your favorite social media channel. I'm at Suzy Lolly on Twitter. And then finally, my very favorite is if you subscribe. Subscribe to YouTube and subscribe on the blog. Take care.